There are going to be a number of things that we're battling during this time. Besides battling our own flesh and our own attitudes, we're going to be battling demons. We're going to be battling demons working through other people. We're going to be battling, I'm getting this right now, pressure in the air. You know how the Bible says that, that the devil is the prince of the air? Well, in the airwaves, we're going to start feeling pressure. And like Lynn was talking earlier, and I've mentioned uh, uh, many times in the past, when that pressure, when that depression, when that anxiety, when all this comes on you, you got to take authority and rebuke it. You don't have to let it sit in your house and torment you because it can get in there. Just as quick as it got in, you can get it out. But you have to take authority and use the power that's in the name of Jesus to do so. You got to open your mouth and spit those words out. I command you to leave my house. You're trespassing. Get out of here right now and never return. There are times when I have experienced in the kitchen beautiful day gorgeous outside sunshine and like it is right now everything just looks perfect i have no problems everything's going fine and then all of a sudden boom this heaviness this anxiety this feeling like everything is worthless and what's the use oh, oh i recognize that crap get up out of here the joy of the Lord is my strength, and you are trespassing, so you get up out of my house. And you're not going to attack my emotions, my body, my atmosphere. You're not going to attack anything. I bind you in the name of Jesus. The reason you say that is because the scripture says, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth, like blessings, health, healing, prosperity, will be loosed in heaven. So what you say down here goes up there. It goes. It happens because God backs your word. As long as you're going by the word, he backs your word. But you have to use those words. You have to say those words by faith. Now, if you're sitting up there grumbling and complaining, you're fussing about the Lord. You're fussing about Brother Appleseed. You're fussing about Pastor Peanut Head. You're fussing about Sister Cuckoo, whatever. You're not, your prayers and your experience is not going to see much result. You're not going to see a lot of solutions happening in your life because while you're complaining, while you're grumbling, while you're fussing, fuming, arguing, attituding, whatever you want to call it, you're on the devil's treadmill. You're running, you're walking. You're running, you're walking. You're rushing over here, you're rushing over there. But guess what? You're getting nowhere fast because you're marking time. You're on a treadmill. That's right, you're getting nowhere. You're getting nothing accomplished. Matter of fact, if you slow down, you're going to find yourself sliding back and you might be off the treadmill altogether, not doing anything. That's what happens. A lot of times, grumbling, complaining, fuming, fussing can take you on the treadmill on a backslide. You find yourself regressing so far that you'll be eating up your own vomit like the dogs do. You'll be falling back into your old ways, your old sins, your old desires, your old habits. You got to learn to press in and press forward. What does the scripture say? I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. It's just like walking through a storm, like the video I did this morning. You're walking through the storm. I've, I've walked through snow blizzards before, where the snow, the wind is whipping so hard, when the snow hits your face, they feel like little needles prickling your skin.
Your eyebrows are frozen. The hair around the edges poking out of your hat are frozen. I mean, everything, it's crazy. You got to wear gloves. You got to have Vaseline to, to insulate yourself, just like the oil of the Lord that insulates us from the onslaught of this world. But guess what? The bottom line is when that wind is whipping, you know you got to get home. You can't sit still in that cold weather and not do anything. You got to bust a move. You got to keep moving forward because if you sit, you can suffer from frostbite. Think about what I'm saying. It's the sitting, the fretting, the fussing that gets you in trouble. That's the threat, not the weather. All you got to do is walk through that weather or run through that weather. Let that wind hit you in the face, but press, walk against, press in against that wind. You got to lean in. When the wind's trying to blow you back, you lean forward that much more. Let the leverage keep you able to move forward. And you walk until you get your behind home in a nice warm house. That's what you do. See, a lot of you, when the wind starts blowing on you, when things start kicking up and, the, and, and, and all hell starts breaking loose all around you and, and your boss is acting like an idiot and your co-worker is, is hollering and fuming and fussing and, and this one over here is panic stricken and there's chaos over here, confusion over there, there's anger, there's strife. There's backbiting, there's bitterness. You got stuff going on in your family. They're fussing and fuming. They're mad at you for this and you're mad at them for that. You're mad at the pastor because he didn't let you do this, that, or the other. And you're just all caught up in all this childish frenzy about nothing. You cannot allow the devil to trip you out that way. It's a waste, y'all. You are marching to the enemy's tomb when you do that. Because when you march to the enemy's tomb, his goal is not only to steal, kill, and destroy, but he accomplishes all of that by wearing out the saints. That's word, y'all. Don't let them wear you out. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently on him. <laughs> he will renew your strength. You got to practice the presence of God. Mm -hmm. In his presence is fullness of joy. Not in the presence of him, her, and them. In the presence of God. Because God is your strength. All right, so we have to learn where are we going to put our focus? What are we going to lean on? We lean on God. We lean into the storm. We brush off and forsake all the strife that's in the atmosphere. We rebuke, shut down, bind, cancel all the assignments against us so that we're not going on a yo-yo ride and a roller coaster emotional journey of happy, sad, mad, upset, depressed, happy, sad, mad. No, the Bible says a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you cannot be double-minded, fretting one minute, faith in the next, doubting one minute, believe in the next, praising God one minute, cursing him the next. You cannot go through a life like that. It is torment, utter torment. And all you're doing is you're dancing to the devil's tune on the devil's treadmill. Don't let him waste you like that. Don't let him wear you out. Don't let him accomplish his goal. No, kick him to the curb. You got everything in your arsenal to do so. You hear what I'm saying? We'll deal with spiritual warfare on another day. But for today, it's a matter of, as the word says, if you keep your mind stayed on him, that's capital H-I-M, 
That's capital G, capital O, capital D. I like to put the capitals on all because he's God. When you keep your mind stayed on him, what does he do? He will keep you in perfect peace. That's what he does. But you oftentimes keep your mind stayed on all the crap that's going on down here, don't you? Yeah. See, sometimes we kind of, our flesh mm -hmm, and the little demons that manipulate us and the little familiar spirits that came through when we came through our mother's canal. <clears throat> sometimes we almost take pleasure in whining and crying and fussing and complaining. We take pleasure in that. We cannot allow ourselves to be a funnel for the devil and his crap. Don't allow it. You are housing the Holy Spirit within. What are you doing allowing the devil to come in and sup with you? What are you doing allowing the devil and his little imps to express their nastiness through your being? Why would you even do that? Hmm. Some of you do it through internet, porn, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to go down the list because I don't even want to give the devil all that glory. But the bottom line is, you know your little area, your little drugs of choice. You know. You know what you like to dabble in. Witchcraft, tarot cards, gossip, backbiting, whatever, sowing discord. You know what you like to do. But see, what you're doing is you're dancing to the devil's tune. So you have to remember that patience shuts your mouth. When he says, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Hmm. See, the patience that you live by through the power of the Holy Spirit, that level of patience will stop you from getting upset. That level of patience will give you self-control. You keep your mouth shut. When you want to go blab to blab to blab about brother or sister, so-and-so, what they did, what they didn't do, how they did it, how they look when they did uh If you're really patient, you won't need to do that. The patience that you have for God takes away your need to run your mouth and spread mess. It will take away your need to blow somebody up in public, cuss them out, tell them all, put them in their place. It removes your need to panic to press the panic button and make rash decisions. Rash decisions. That is what gets us in control in tr in trouble. Rash decisions come from impatience. Rash decisions come from doubt and fear. And when you allow yourself to make emotional emotionally sparked rash decisions, guess what? Oh my goodness, you are sowing to the wind. And what does God say about you sowing to the wind? If you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. Oh, you don't want that. You don't want that because you're inviting all kind of hell busting loose in your life. And everything is sabotaged. Everything you put your hands to falls by the wayside because you are choosing to sow to the wind. You are choosing to dance to the devil's tune. You are choosing to open your mouth when you should shut up. You are choosing to backbite when you should be edifying. Mm. You're choosing to express your anger. Express yourself. Uh, 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 Express yourself. Yeah, that's what you're doing. And you're allowing the devil to cuss through you, to blaspheme through you, to backbite through you, to gossip through you, to backstab through you. Oh, you allow a lot of stuff. Now, this is not all of you. We know that. That's why the Lord says, be patient, therefore, brethren, 
unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge, that's God, standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Now, I read that to make sure you heard it. Because a lot of times we hear the word, it goes in one ear and out the other. But that's why we need patience. Patience will be the thing that floats our boat and we can float through the flood. Patience will be the thing that enables us to see the door to safety that otherwise we would not see if we're in panic mode, running over here, running over there like a chicken with your head cut off out of total hysteria. See, you cannot focus on what's going on. You have to focus on glory, focus on God. Focus on Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the power that's in that package deal, baby. It can all work for you or you can null and void it and work against it. And then the devil can work against you. And you will have allowed him to. You will have given him legal permission. See, we don't realize how we sabotage ourselves. So I'm not going to dwell on that because there are many of you that believe God. You're living for God. You're obeying him. You're spending time with him. You're being still and knowing that he is God in your life. And he's working things out. He's working miracles in your life because you're living with him by faith. Huh? Not by fuss. Not by cuss. Not by panic. Not by doubt not by fear. You're living by faith and you're reaping the benefits. See, when the Bible says you reap what you sow, sow that faith, baby. Sow praise and worship. Sow gratitude. Because the more gratitude you sow, huh, the more blessings you're going to reap. Ask me how I know. Okay, let me tell this story. Thank you, Lord thought about it when I was studying for the message and uh, it's coming back to my mind. So let me tell this story. I was at the banquet Friday night. Many of you didn't hear this. You didn't know this happened. I was at the banquet Friday night and you know, the weather was bad, raining, cold. I was tired, y'all. I was ready to go home and dive under the bed. But I still had an hour and a half to go home or two or three hours, depending on the traffic. Well, I go out to my car and guess what? My car is not there. I'm feeling in my spirit nothing but peace. I'm looking at the parking space. I'm looking at the building. I know that's where I park my car. So I walked all around. Somebody even drove me around the parking lot. Couldn't find my car anywhere. So I said, okay, maybe I'll call AAA. I wonder if they'll bring me home because I had that 200 mile from one trip. Ha, huh, what is going on? So I go inside. I'm still feeling peace. Listen to this. I go inside. I sit down. And I looked up and I whispered to the Lord, Lord, how are you going to handle this? What are you going to do with this one? Thank you for keeping me in perfect peace. I'm not upset. I'm not worried. But I do want to go home. I'm exhausted. The security uh, lady comes 
And I asked her why my car isn't there. Did they tow it? Could she check and see if maybe I forgot to put my handicap sticker up? You know, blah, blah, blah. She checks. She comes back about 15 minutes later, y'all. I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go to bed. Graduation. And this had to happen. Satan's always trying to throw a monkey wrench, even in your feast uh, festivities. All right. So I'm sitting there still in perfect peace. I'm not even upset. I'm just tired. I want to go home. And I'm trying to think, where am I going to sleep? Is somebody going up to the Apple Valley area? Well, how am I going to get home? So I'm sitting there. And she comes back 15 minutes later. I was wondering if she even, you know, forgot about me. And she said, oh, by the way, um, we found your car. And I'm thinking, "Uh uh-oh, where is it? But I'm not fearful. I'm like, let's see what she's going to say next. She said, you see, we have two parking, parking lots. And if you don't know the area, they look identical. She said, your car is parked where you parked it. It hasn't been broken in. It's fine. I'll take you there. I'm thinking, I know when I walk in a building how to find my way around. How did that happen? She walked me to the car. That parking lot and the building looked exactly the same as the side I was on where my car looked like it had been stolen. Isn't that crazy? So I said, okay, Lord, you already had the solution, but you kept me in perfect peace. That's the miracle because I am very emotional, y'all. You have no idea how much God keeps me under control. I'm very emotional. I'm easily panic stricken. But since I've been walking with the Lord, My life is so much sweeter, so much easier, so much, so much stress-free. It's so stress-free. I mean, the miracle of emotion he works in me because I lean on him. I can't afford to lean on me. I break, but he doesn't. So I was in perfect peace. I wasn't fussing at the Lord. How you let this happen to me? I'm just saying, okay, let's see what your strategy is. What are you going to bring out of this experience? Mm -hmm. And there was my car. And I was able to get in my car and drive home and dive under the bed and get some rest. Much needed rest. Three hours drive, but I got there. So my point to you is life happens. How are you going to respond to it? Are you going to patiently wait on the Oh, Lord, thank you for that song. There's a song that says, keep patiently waiting because I know he'll bring you out. Don't be weary. Don't be dismayed. God's going to wipe all your tears away. He knows all your suffering. He knows all your pain. He knows your every weakness. He knows about the strain. He's bringing you out. He's bringing you out. I don't know what you've been going through. I may not know what it's all about, but he is bringing you out. I don't have a doubt. Keep patiently waiting because I know he'll bring you out. God bless you as you wait on the Lord. His redemption draweth not, whether it be the second coming or his rescue. Either way, he's going to show up on the scene no matter what you're going through, but expect him to. Don't expect him to abandon you. Expect him to show up and show out. Amen. God bless you.